Hi guys, my name's Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Now, today I want to talk about whether or not you're a people pleaser, because I'm not, but there are other people that are. And it was brought up to me earlier this week that, that sometimes this causes so much additional stress, so much additional heartache, so, much, so many other additional problems. And, you know, it's, it's a huge, huge issue that people face. Um, they always want to please other people, they want validation, they want all of these other things, you know, they want to be patted on the head for when they do well, and all that kind of thing. You know, being the loyal, um, kind of standing behind your, your side the whole time, just to please those around you rather than to serve yourself. Uh, it's something that potentially kind of stacks up additional stresses and additional kind of heartache and other things, and it can make you miserable quite frankly, you know, it, it can wear you down, always having to try and do stuff on behalf of other people to make their lives better will take a toll on yours. And so when it comes to um, being that kind of people pleaser, I've got five things here that, that in theory, and as I've said before, all of these things that I talk to you guys about, I've seen work, I've seen uh, people use them. But obviously the specifics of your situation may vary a little bit. But here are five things that should hopefully help you to stop being so much of a people pleaser to the extent that it's actually damaging your own life. Excuse me. Uh, sorry, still a bit uh, throaty. But anyway, the first one is learn to say no. And I've talked about this in other videos. You know, it's... One of these things that, that when people will come to you, they they may very well ask you for help. You know, I'm, I'm one of these people amongst my friends, amongst my family, amongst all manner of people, partly because of my profession, but also because I've always been the responsible one that will try and help out. And so people come to me and ask for help, you know. And this is where a lot of the problems start, because you go yeah sure okay yeah I, I'll, I'll help and then you'll get asked again and again and then by three other people all of them with with varying degrees of problems all of wanting all wanting varying degrees of input and you're going to get exhausted you're going to get wiped you're going to get burned out unless you can start saying no to the ones that either don't involve you that you don't need to you know the people don't actually need your help with or the are otherwise just going to be difficult for you to touch on with those individuals. You know, if someone comes to me and starts talking to me about help that they need with a topic that's completely outside of my realm of, of influence or knowledge, or where they want my help to go and settle something when that something might be part of their relationship, I've got to say no. Why? Because I don't know anything about what you're asking me about. And as a coach, yeah, sure, I'd be able to potentially help you plan it out. But if you want me as a coach, pay me. You know, um, if, if you want um, my the benefit of my opinion as, as your friend, then I can only give a very limited amount because I don't know what you're, the, the specifics of the thing that you're asking me about. In regards to people's relationships, mm, that's your relationship. I've got no stake in it. I've got no part in it. Unless you're asking for something like an outside opinion on something for uh, that's that's kind of frivolous and unimportant, you know. Oh, what do you think of this birthday gift that I got them? Okay, well, sure, I might give you an opinion on that if I know the person, so I can make the judgment call. But otherwise, no, I'm not going to help you at all because that's got no, you know. I don't want to be the person who goes, oh well, this, that, and the other, and then you know, spinning it around the other way becomes a case of, oh, well, I gave you this piece of advice because that worked for me in the past and actually it just blew up in your face because I don't know your partner, I don't know you and whatever else. Again, in terms of coaching, in terms of the specifics of, of various pieces of information I can present through that, then yeah, maybe if you're having difficulty in conversations, learning some of the things that I could suggest from how I learned to listen, actively listen, paying attention to people, how to ask questions. You know, that's information that I could maybe share as a means by which to relax the situation that you're finding yourself in 
but I'm not going to be telling you what questions to ask. I'm not going to be telling you which things to say. That's all for you to find out. I'm just there to present a tool. But as a result though, saying no is important because if you're in my situation and you said yes every single time, you'd potentially cause more hardship, you'd burn yourself out, you wouldn't be able to help other people or yourself should the need arise suddenly, you know, and, and so it's that thing that cascades and breaks you down and, and that's where all these problems start. The next thing is uh, you need to make sure that you ask for what you deserve. Like I just did just a moment ago, if someone wants my expertise as a coach, that's my livelihood, that's my speciality. I'm, you know, I put out all these videos on YouTube for free that contain all of this information. If you want more, then ask for more, sure. But if you want my personal investment in your situation, if you want my personal skill set, my personal strengths and weaknesses to to help counterbalance yours, then you better pay me. You're going to want to book my time, treat me reasonably, and I will do you the same courtesy. But otherwise, I'm not giving you anything in that regard as that part of me. Why? Because I'm asking for what I need, for what I deserve out of the, the situation. You know, if, if you don't ask for that, if you don't ask for compensation, if you don't ask for what, you're, what you feel you're worth, then you're the only person that sets your worth. If you don't ask for it, you're not going to get it, which means that in turn you're making yourself worthless. And that's a harsh thing to say, but it's true. So what's more important, pleasing people or maintaining your worth, maintaining your livelihood, maintaining your reputation? Usually the latter. So make sure that you ask for what you deserve and for what you want. If you don't ask for what you want, no one else is going to be able to read your mind and give it to you. You need to communicate. You need to tell. Also, in regards to communication, you need to make sure that you speak up. If someone disrespects you, says something that you don't like, don't ignore it. There are ways to take the high ground and kind of ignore the elements that would impact you in the worst possible way without purely ignoring it. It's the whole, if someone's done something bad to you, you can forgive them, but you won't forget. Or at least you shouldn't forget, because if you forget, then that means you've learned nothing from that situation that you were in before. So if it's someone being rude, something saying something outside of it, if someone's trying to change you in a way that you are not comfortable with, um, if you don't actually speak up, no one will, well, firstly, be able to hear you. But also, you know, if you if you haven't put up those those objections and generated that conversation around it, there's no learning. There's no development of that relationship because you are then just being a doormat. You're being walked over again and again and again because you're not actually posing your objection. So, you know, someone saying, again, taking the example of me as a coach and a client coming to find me or a friend coming to find me and wanting my, my expertise in coaching and, and the tools that I have available to me and they're not willing to watch it on YouTube for some reason because that would be way too difficult, um, even though it's at their fingertips. Uh, they they just want me invested specifically in their situation. So I can say no. I can reason why, because they're not willing to pay me. Um, and they're not willing to give over any part of themselves, even though that's what I would deserve and that's what I, I need and want. But also, if none of that makes any difference, if I haven't spoken up in the first place. Yeah? someone comes to me and then says that I'm not I'm not worth it I'm and you know you uh, I'm just a friend you should just help me out if I don't speak up if I can't enunciate if I can't generate the noise around just saying no and asking for what I'm actually wanting and what I need and what I deserve in that position then uh, you know they're going to be met with a wall of silence they're going to make assumptions 
and assumptions are where things start to break down even further because if people get to assume then they will make up whatever it is to put themselves and their situation in the best possible light and if they do that then that means that you're quite frankly just going to be left in this this empty environment alone unsupported and usually crumbling under the pressure that other people are putting you on uh, putting you under rather um, purely because you've not posed those objections you've not spoken up you've not made yourself clear something that really needs to happen <clears throat> the next thing is we talked about how you want to be treated and how you need to communicate but if you're not doing that to other people then you won't be getting it done to you either treat others the way that you want to be treated because then those other people around you will see how you interact with the world the benefits that you provide in the way that you deal with other people and so as a result they will be suggest it will be suggested to them in a way to do the same especially with you because you have potentially treated some of them in that way and it becomes cyclical. It's that learning to reinforce what you're doing. But then where does that leave us with our last point? And this is a point that I've talked about a whole load. But ultimately, stand your ground. Have your boundaries. Choose your limits. Because if you don't do that, then it doesn't matter if you speak up. It doesn't matter if you've said no. It doesn't matter if you're treating others the way you would like to be treated, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter if you've you've asked for what you want, because if you don't have those solid boundaries in place, then someone pushes back against what you said, and there's wiggle room, potentially striding room, so much room that they can shift and change and alter things to suit them within what you've already said. Set your boundaries. Be transparent with them. Communicate them. Use them in regards to every single person. For instance, I won't be changing the prices of my services for anybody. I won't be changing the ways that I do certain videos or the way that I want to address you guys um, just because of someone complaining for the sake of complaining. If they have a legitimate point, slightly different issue. But overall, how I conduct myself like here by myself is a different situation than if I was at a seminar or if I was with a client. But even then, the prices, my code of conduct, the code of ethics that I have to follow as a coach, my contract, all of those are predetermined. All of those are laid out. All those are straightforward. All of those are adhered to. In which case, those boundaries are already in place. And in terms of things like the code of conduct and my, um, or code of ethics and my um, contract, those are literally written down for reference for both myself and whoever it is that I'm dealing with and so as a result those boundaries can't be moved because they've already been agreed and if someone then decides to try and move the boundaries or mess me around then that means that I can quite happily stamp, like just stomp on them for it because they have gone against the contract and the agreements that have been made prior so again whilst I'm taking examples from me this can be applied to anything you in work you need to learn when to say no when to to ask for what you're deserving ask for um the the if you don't necessarily have the option to just speak up the option the ability to speak up yeah going and talking to your manager a representative someone like that to open up those doorways to you so you can speak up and allow your your boundaries to be better communicated. You need those boundaries to be solid and you need to make sure that you're treating everyone consistently and probably treating them the way that you would like to be treated in the situation that the, you're finding yourself in or that they are finding themselves in. For instance, in regards to that last part again, when I go and deal with people in retail, you know, I might sometimes be upset, I might sometimes be annoyed or agitated by what has led me to go and interact with that person but I'm still going to be reasonable with them I'm not going to be a dick because I want to treat others the way that I would like to be treated so I have my limits I'm speaking up I'm saying no to whatever the the negative may be in that situation 
and I'm asking for them to help me as I have paid as a as a customer. That's what I'm doing in in regards to walking into a shop and with a with an issue that needs to be resolved. You can still go through saying that it's not good enough, i.e., saying no to the situation, speaking up directly to the person, asking for it to be remedied, i.e., what you deserve, having your boundaries in place so that and communicating them effectively so that they know that you're expecting a very specific remedy to their to, to the situation, but also don't just be an asshole to the person behind the till. Because if you were behind the till, you wouldn't want people to be an asshole to you. All goes round. But anyway, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I hope you found this um, kind of useful. Uh, because I know that there are an awful lot of people who are looking to please others. And this is you know, peer pressure. Students in university that are let off the leash, their parents' leash for the first time. And are stuck in those environments. All those kind of things. They always look to find other people to validate them, to reinforce them. Same in people moving into new workplaces. You know, don't just look to please people because if you do, you're only going to end up in a, a negative place where people are, are going to take advantage of you. They're going to use you as a doormat. They're not going to in any way really help you out and you're going to end up burning yourself out just because you've not laid out those those boundaries and things in place in the first, you know, the, the very beginning. So, uh, yeah, otherwise, guys... If you've got any other experiences, other examples that you feel apply to these, please drop them down in the comments. You know, it's always nice to hear other people's experiences and things like that. But otherwise, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.